Well, thank you for being here, everyone. Um, with me, holding up a number of posters, are, are County Board Chair Annalise Eicher and members of the Dane County Parks Commission, uh, Tom Thorson, Dave Ripp, who's the chair, Nancy Vogue is here also, Annalise, oh, I, I, I mentioned Annalise, and um, Christy Goforth is also a member, and she's also the executive director of Free Bikes for Kids, and she's going to have a few words to say when I'm done, and then all of us will be available for questions. So thank you for being here. Today I'm going to talk about um, some of the portions of my 2021 budget that will be introduced that have to do with natural resources, lakes, and bicycles. Um, it's been a tough year for all of us. And during times of crisis like we've experienced, we need parks and natural areas now more than ever. We need the ability to get outside, to breathe fresh air, and to enjoy all the benefits that natural areas and parks have to offer. This year, approximately 4 million people visited Dane County Parks. 4 million people. That's up 1 million visitors over last year. Now, our parks are always quite popular, but given the, 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 the restrictions of COVID and the challenges that we've faced, People have needed to get outside this year more than ever, and they will continue to do so. This demonstrates just how important the outdoors is to our physical and emotional well-being. Be it hiking or biking or floating down a river, the outdoors provides a healing experience and a place to escape and clear out our heads during the best of times, but certainly even more so today. My 2020 budget recognizes the importance of the outdoors and continues our strong tradition of investing in our community's well-being by creating and preserving our opportunity to get outside and experience the natural world and all it has to offer. In the area of trails for hiking and biking, this is an area that we've made great progress in over the last decade. Our community wants this. It needs it, and we've been able to do great things to create trails for people to get on, mostly that are off-road. Over the last couple of years, we were able to develop the Lower Yahara Trail between Lake Farm Park and McFarland, and it's become one of the most popular destinations and trails in our entire county. And this year, um, my budget will contain the next phase of this trail, the money to do the work to connect Fish Camp Park um, to, to, to Lake Caganza Park so that one day you will be able to get on a bicycle in downtown Madison and go off-road all the way to Stoughton. Another important trail we've been working on is the North Mendota Trail. We know as our community has grown that Highway M between Middleton and 113 has become increasingly busy and increasingly dangerous for bicycling. So we've partnered with the town of Westport and others to begin building the trail that parallels Highway M to provide a safe alternative route between a number of communities. Um, in the segment that we constructed in 2019 included over 1,600 feet of elevated boardwalk and a 100-foot clear span bridge over Six Mile Creek. My 2021 budget will include $350,000 to continue development of this trail through Governor Nelson Park and funds to plan a future trail that will eventually lead all the way to Mendota County Park in Middleton. Another exciting project we're working on in partnership with Sauk County is the Walking Iron Trail. This trail will connect Mazamani to Sauk County and it will, so we have money in the budget this year, $150,000 to continue that partnership to do engineering and to study the feasibility of restoring a railroad bridge over the river to connect the two communities. The Ice Age National Scenic Trail is a treasure that we have been happy to partner with and, 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 and purchase a number of segments of, certainly through our community. The 2021 budget will contain another $100,000 for the Ice Age National Scenic Trail at the Ice Age Junction Natural Resource Area. This will be a partnership between the City of Verona, Dane County, the Ice Age Trail Alliance, and the Southern Chapter of Wisconsin Trout Unlimited. 
biking is becoming incredibly important and a growing importance for not only our physical well-being, our emotional well-being, but when we look at safe alternatives and for transportation, safe alternatives to getting in the automobile that help us physically and help us reduce carbon emissions and, and, and fight climate change, we have a lot of partners that we like to work with. And our communities across this county are very interested in actively searching and working on building these trails. We have a, a grant program called Park and Ride that's been very successful where we partner with and provide matching grants to communities who want to, and nonprofits who want to develop bike trails. Um, this year, we're going to have another half million dollars um, devoted to the Park and Ride um, program to continue those partnerships to help us connect trails with municipalities throughout our community. Additionally, we will continue our multi-year restoration of the 20-mile long Cap, um, Cap City bike trail. Um, this year, with the trail overpass, pavement was restored in 2020 from Seminole Highway toward the Bicycle Roundabout. Now, the restoration of this segment, includes, which we'll be looking at, includes raising portions of a trail that have had chronic flooding and ice buildup. All told, already Dane County has refinished over eight and a half miles of the Cap City Trail in 2018 and 2019, and we look forward to continuing that effort. As we look at different, different initiatives we have, um, be, it, be it conserving park area, natural areas, building trails for biking and hiking and get outdoors, one of the most important aspects of our work has been our clean lakes work. And we've partnered with our farm families on much of the work that we do to reduce the amount of runoff that comes from farm fields. And we've had tremendous results from these partnerships. And when we partner with our farmers, and work together, we create change that's lasting, that not only supports family farms, but that also helps reduce runoff and clean up our lakes. One of our more popular programs has been the Continuous Cover Crop Program. This is a program we started a couple of years ago through which we partner with farmers who want to convert from row cropping to continuous cover, be it if they want to do rotational grazing or plant grasses or convert it to prairie. Um, it's been a very successful program in reducing runoff and helping family farmers. Um, this year, we are expanding the program to include $1.75 million to partner with our local farmers in this effort. Another program that has become somewhat famous is our Suck the Muck program. Um, again, this is a partnership when we look at the partnership we have with our farmers, we're working upstream to reduce runoff. But one of our challenges is there is already decades worth of phosphorus-laden muck in many of our rivers and streams that feed into our chain of lakes. And so we have been working for the past few years to hydraulically dredge that phosphorus-laden muck from those streams so that that phosphorus does not continue to bubble up and feed into our lake system. Um, this year, Suck the Muck, we are going to have um, $500,000 in new money, and we have um, $9.1 million to carry forward to keep this money going in 2021 as we reach our next segment and continue to remove that phosphorus-laden muck from the system. And then finally, when we look at our, our flood control efforts um, that are so, so tightly linked to so much of what we do, um, we learned unfortunately, a few years ago, that our chain of lakes is not able to handle the amount of rain that we received a few years ago and that we're receiving more and more of. We know that our climate is changing and we're having more rain events, heavier rain events, much more rain hitting the ground all at once than used to in the past. I'm just going to pause for one second. A lot of our partnerships like continuous cover and a lot of the lands that we buy um, to, to absorb the water and to slow down the flow um, of water into the system when we get these storms is critically important. What we've also learned is our channels that connect the four lakes have become laden with runoff. Much of this is urban runoff and we cannot move the water through the system fast enough when we get these heavy rains and the result is, is flooding. So we began a project this year where we are dredging between those channels of lakes. Um, we're finishing up um, the project this year. 
between Lakes Monona and Wabisa to allow that water to flow. And we'll continue next year on the other side of Lake Kaganza to open up that stream too. So on the other side of Stoughton, the water can flow out. When all is said and done, we will have dredged over the next few years between all four lakes so that when those heavier rains hit and the water goes in, the lakes and the channels can handle that water and we can get it out of the system sooner and help reduce flooding. Another piece of our work to reduce flooding and to reduce runoff is our urban water quality grant program. This year's budget will contain three quarters of a million dollars for the water quality grant program. And this money is used to partner with local communities, Fitchburg, Monona, Middleton, and others um, to replace stormwater outfalls that take water. As you know, our system is designed to take all the water that hits and get it into the, the, the stormwater sewers that go directly into our lakes. And with it, they carry debris, and that also adds to the rush of water going in and the flooding that occurs. Through this partnership, we partner with local communities to build stormwater retention ponds to replace those old outfalls so that the water can go into these ponds before it goes into the lakes. It allows the sediment a chance to settle out and it slows down the flow of water. And then finally, my budget will contain $4 million for the Dane County Conservation Fund and $1 million for our Flood Risk Reduction Fund. Um, as we know, as we've seen purchases over the last number of years, we are a quickly developing county. And if we want our community and our county to maintain areas like there are behind me and like surround us, where people can get out into nature, where we can preserve habitat for wildlife and for pollinators, where we can provide prairie and forested land for carbon sequestration and to absorb the water that hits before it runs into our lakes, we need to preserve the land we have when we have it. This is a critical part of our conservation effort, it's a critical part of our flood reduction effort, and it's a critical part of our effort to clean up our lakes and to slow the runoff that we experience. Um, so, you know, in closing, before I turn it over to Christy, I want to thank the county board for all the partnerships um, that we've, we, 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 we've come together on to preserve our natural lands, to preserve recreational opportunities. I want to thank the Parks Commission for all of their good work. I want to thank the Land and Water Resources staff um, for making all of this a reality and to bringing these projects to us and to bringing them to fruition. None of this would happen um, without their hard work. This is a team effort, and I think we're all proud that we believe it reflects the values of this community, and this is how our community wants us to invest our dollars to preserve what's so beautiful about the county in which we live. So again, I'm happy now to turn it over to, to Christy. Um, she's going to talk a little bit about um, the, the budget and about, about the work that she does and the importance of bicycling in our community. And then any of us here would be happy to take any questions. Thank you. Thanks, Christy. Good morning. So great to be here with all of you today. Um, I'm trying to refrain from jumping up and down with excitement, not only because I'm amidst, amidst uh, fellow humans in 2020, but because of this exciting announcement about the trail expansion. Um, you know, I remember three years ago when we, you led the grand opening for the Lower Yahara River Trail, and what an exciting and unique moment that was for so many of us. That trail is a really unique asset to our area and really in the country. Um, like Executive Parisi said, it has become a shining star in our network of trails, um, which consists of hundreds of miles. So it's also a huge driver for our local economy. Um, we have numerous local businesses that benefit, that are waiting here, serving the, those who visit that trail and experience that. Um, I think the trail uh, investment is just an excellent investment in our future. Um, we now know our reality is living amidst pandemics and biking is a naturally distanced activity. Um, and we all need options to stay healthy and fit and safe distance from others. Um, I think if you saw last week, the Cap Times ran an article from Dave Zwiefel, and uh, Dave was commending the county on its inclusivity initiatives. And the Lower Yahara Tri River Trail does not require a trail pass, so it's a free pass. And although trail passes may seem affordable to many of us, they're not. A, it, it can provide a barrier to many people who are who want to bike and experience biking like we do. Um, so I love that inclusivity measure that's happening, and I think the uh, the addition of the trail is just a brilliant investment in our future here. The, 
as an asset to the local economy and to all of us as residents who want to stay healthy and fit. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Christy, and uh, thank you again, everyone, for being here. We'd be happy to answer any questions. Can you just talk about how integral the county waterways, trails, um, our identity? Yeah, if you look at, I mean, if you want to zoom out, you know, from a map geographically, you look, the heart of our community is four lakes that are connected, and it's surrounded by, 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 by not only the city of Madison, but beautiful small towns and our agriculture and trails that connect everything. You know, there aren't a lot of places left where you can have an urban experience like you can in the city of Madison and hop on a bicycle and 20 minutes later be out in a beautiful area like this. So it's critical that we preserve this special part of our community. You know, we don't want to turn into you know, another area like Chicago with miles and miles and miles of sprawling suburbs that all look the same. Um, we're fortunate to live in a very unique community that offers incredible recreational opportunities and incredible beauty. And this community is, is committed, as are we, to doing everything we can to preserve what's special about Dane County. Any other questions? All right, thanks for being here, everyone. Thank you all again. Appreciate it.